hallelujah, hallelujah. Even before I start my sermon on today, just before I even acknowledge the pastor of this awesome ministry and his beautiful and wonderful co-pastor, assistant pastor, I just need to tell you all here at Union Bethel how honored and what a privilege I consider it to be to be even asked to come and stand behind this desk. I am just so moved and so blessed and I, I, I can't even express how we respect your man and woman of God to Reverend Dr. Harry Seawright, our next bishop in the AME Church, amen, amen. To his wonderful wife, assistant pastor, Pastor Sharita, I love them both so dearly, but I just need to get myself together because, you know, you sit here and you wait to speak, but then when you get up here, it's like, oh my God, you're getting ready to preach at Union Bethel, amen. Uh, so we are blessed on today to be able to come and to share a word from the Lord with you on today. To Sister Anderson, our worship leader, to Reverend Montgomery, thank you so much. We are just honored on today to be here. So we need to get to the text, amen? And we have read your foundational text for this weekend, but if we can turn to the Song of Solomon, chapter number seven, looking at verses one through six, Amen. Now let me just preference myself to this awesome music ministry. Pastor Sharita, I really do need it. Because I'm kind of nervous because I'm at Union Bethel. Praise God. But I'm going to, but look, I'm going to preach, amen. Because I'm going to tell you, the music ministry here, you all are phenomenal. Amen. Amen. I was telling Pastor Sharita, I was like, I was getting ready to run there for a minute, praise God, and I had to remember that I was not at home. But I was trying to be myself, but the music here just took me in, and for that I am grateful. So that really helped get some of the nerves off of me, amen? Amen. So we're going to go, before we even pray, let's read our text, and then we will get on with the word on today, amen? Song of Solomon. Chapter number seven, verses one through six. How beautiful are your feet in sandals, O prince's daughter. The curve of your thighs are like jewels, the work of your hands of a skillful workman. Your navel is a rounded goblet. It lacks no blended beverage. Your waist is a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are like the pools in Heshbon. By the gate of Bath Rabin, your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, which looks towards Damascus. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel, and the hair on your head is like purple. A king is held captive by your tresses. How fair and how pleasant you are, O oh love, with your delights. That's our foundational text for today. Let's look to the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, knowing the awesome responsibility that we have here to stand behind your desk to bring forth the word. But God, there is a word from the Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would have me to be clay in your hands. Amen. And God, I, I pray, God, that you will mold me and shape me, that I will say exactly what you've given me to say, that your women here at Union Bethel will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I do bring you greetings from First AME of Manassas, where my husband, Reverend Tony D. Boone, is the pastor. And Pastor C. Right, like I was sharing with you back in the back, pastor is in Africa, and he should be coming back to America on this coming Wednesday. Amen. But I hate to tell y'all this, I love my free days since my husband ain't been with me. Amen. 
I hate to admit it, but there's been a couple of days I haven't made up the bed. I didn't do it simply because I didn't have to. Amen. Slept late some days. Went to bed early some days. Amen. I do miss Pastor, but boy, was I glad he was gone for 10 days. Praise God. I've enjoyed it. Amen. 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 Well, today, you all, Songs of Solomon is a love story celebrating the love between Christ and his redeemed people. The intimate love story between a man and a woman reflecting the sacred union between Christ and his beloved church. Some scholars even believe that this text should not have even been included in the biblical text because of the overt sexual descriptions between the Shulamite, who represents the groom, who represents Christ, and his beloved bride, who represents the church, who is us. The Song of Solomon, also called the Song of Songs, is often re referred to as a royal marriage hymn or songs of love. And if you really, really want to get to know what I'm really, really talking about so you can really identify with it, just think about every night here in the DMV at 7 o'clock on WHUR and the quiet storm comes on. That's the Song of Solomon. This is the love ballad that they would play. Amen? Amen. Amen. To enhance the mood, if you know what I mean. Nowhere in this sacred text do you find the words bride or groom. But if you, reset, if you research the text and if you look at the biblical history, you will find that the companion text in Psalm 45 addresses the royal bridegroom and the royal bride as they get ready for the royal wedding. Well, what does all of this have to do with you, Union Bethel? What does this have to do with you as you celebrate you that God made? Amen? And I know this is not Psalms 139, but there is a correlation. I also know that this is not a marriage counseling service. This is not a marriage conference. This is not, uh, let me just say, this is not uh, seven steps to have more intimacy in your sex relationship. I know that. But I really believe that this text today supports your vision. Because you can't celebrate the you that God made until you really get a bird's eye view of how God sees you. And I really believe that this passage of scripture in Song of Solomon will help you see yourself in a totally different way. See, as a preacher and teacher who's been doing women's conferences for the past 20 years, I know how we, as visionaries, we want you to get it. We seek the Lord, waiting on words of confirmation, that you would catch the revelation that we've received from God as you retreat and do what you do at women's conferences. We come up with themes sent straight from heaven that would empower you, strengthen you, encourage you, and teach you not only to be the woman you know you can be, but be the woman that God created you to be. But as the visionary, the struggle comes because often you don't see it. Often you don't get it. You can't see that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You can't declare the wonderful wor are your works, O oh Lord. Because even after we preach and teach, exhort and encourage you, for many of you, you can't see it. And you even won't believe it. You don't even want to believe that you're beautiful. You don't even want to believe 
that you are wonderful. So how can you celebrate the you that God made even when every day some of you get up and you can't even believe God to pay your mortgage? How can you celebrate the you that God made when you can't even believe that he can turn your life all the way around? You can't believe it. You can't believe it. Some of you get up and you know you're coming to the women's conference, but the only reason why you're going is because your girl is going. You're not looking for a word for yourself. You're not looking for a change to come in your own heart. You're just coming to hang out, to get away with from your husband or your boyfriend or even the kids. And I know it's good to take a break and it's good to get away, but how can you celebrate the you that God made if you can't celebrate who you are and what God has called you to do? And I, I know that there are some of you who still struggle with esteem issues. I got my own, I got my own. I, I'm just not pointing the finger at you. I got my own issues. We all have those issues. You doubt yourself. You don't believe you deserve the job. You don't want to write that book because you don't think people are going to buy it. You won't ask for a promotion. You won't even stand up for yourself. You doubt the move of God in your own life. Even after you have even heard from God through all these women preachers this weekend, you still won't believe that God can make a way for you. So you struggle. You struggle. And you work two jobs. You work three jobs. You can't spend time with your family, and you won't give God the time he deserves. You go to the mirror each day, and you don't like what you see. Your eyes are too far apart. Your head is too big. Your, your skin is too dark. Your skin is too light. Your teeth are crooked and your nose is too wide. My ears are too small. My hips are too wide. My hair is too nappy. My lips are too full. My neck is too short. My feet are too long. Your behind is too flat. Your ankles are swollen. You critique, you analyze, you peruse over your body with a fine tooth comb, looking for something to criticize, something to talk about. Yeah, it's hard to celebrate the you that God made. Well, it, it is hard to do when you can't see yourself as an honor vessel made for his glory. You laugh under your breath when you hear he formed you from your, his inward parts. You knitted me together in your mother's womb. You laugh, you scoff because you know your own personal details of your own conception. They called you illegitimate I don't even know my daddy. Or it could be mom and daddy's marriage was just fine, but you know, I was the problem child. And you felt that nobody loved you. But until you see that you were made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, until you see that God's eye saw you in your unformed substance. And in his book was written every little detail about you. You won't be able to celebrate the you that God made. Until you decree that you are God's precious jewel. The apple of his eye. It's really going to be hard for you to celebrate the God, the you that God made. And so this is the reason I believe he gave me this scripture for you on today. This seventh chapter of the Song of Songs. 
And as you read the text, you have to hear the Lord speaking directly to you. You have to believe this is how God sees me. And this is how God wants me to see myself. As we look at the text, we have to rejoice because God's image of you and me is different from our own perception of how we see ourselves. He says, how beautiful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden. God loves your feet. With his corns and bunions, hammer toes. God loves your feet. He says your rounded limbs are like jewel chains, the work of a master hand. God loves the way you sway your hips, ladies. He loves it. He says, your body is like a round goblet in which no mixed wine is wanting. God loves the shape of your body. He loves the way your waist sits on top of every curve of your hip. God loves you. He says, your abdomen is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. God loves your stomach. Now see, now, now see, I knew I was going to get a laugh there. You know why? Because see, see, men don't think like this. Only we women do. Because see, I, you, gotta, see, you cannot celebrate the you that God made when every morning you get up and say, golly, I hate this gut. Oh my God, I just hate it. Ugh. But see, no matter how big your stomach is from having all those children, he said, no, you know, no matter how big your stomach is from overeating, and you know how you go to the mirror and you look at yourself and you go, oh my God, I hate sit-ups, but God, what am I going to do? So we go and we invest 50, 100, $120 in Spanx. Oh, yes, we do. Hey, hey. <laughs> Ladies, I bet you if I ask you today how many of you got on Spanx right now, most of this congregation would stand up. Because we invest in it. Because we don't like the way all of this looks. And we walk around with a comp. Have you ever been to the beach in the summertime? And you can see, okay, you see the women who have on the bikinis and they're walking around and you walk around with the bathing suit and the bathing suit top comes all the way down to your knee. <laughs> that, that's because you don't like all of this. I'm just telling you. Pastor, I'm just telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But he says, your abdomen is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Good God. He said, the Lord said, he sees our stomachs covered over with beautiful flowers. That's how much he loves your body. He says, even in verse 2, he says how much he loves your navel. He describes it as a rounded goblet. Now, I don't know how many last time y'all saw y'all's navel. Come on now. Come on now. Let's be honest. And hey, look. And I dare to ask you, when was the last time you cleaned it out? I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying. But God says he sees your navel as a goblet. Amen. He said your two breasts are like two fawns, the twins of a gazelle. God thinks my breasts look like two little deers? I don't know. But I know that he loves our breasts no matter how small, how uneven, how scarred from cancer surgery. Let me just say this. You, you know, we, we, we got these ribbons on. You know, commem commemorating Breast Cancer Month. And I know that you all, y'all are healthy women, women of God because you've got strong leadership who's taught you. But do you know how many women hate to go to the mirror after surgery because they hate the way their body now looks? But your body is beautiful, even after surgery, because you belong to a God that loves you. Amen. So no matter how scarred your body is, no matter how small your breasts are, God loves you. He says your neck is like a tower of ivory. He loves your neck even though your double chin hides it most of the time. <laughs> Amen. He says your eyes are like the pool of Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabin. He loves your eyes and he says your nose is like the tower of Lebanon which looks towards Damascus. Now that's a big nose and it's wide. <laughs> your head crowns you like Mount Carmel and the hair on your head like purple. The king is held captive by its threats. So whether your hair is perm, lock, nappy, or straight, curly, or you may just have peach fuzz on your head from chemo. God loves your hair. Let me just say something about this. You know, when um, our 12-year-old daughter was uh, diagnosed with stage four cancer back in 2002. Her, she, my daughter loved her hair. She was young and vibrant and beautiful and she loved her hair. But the first time we went through chemo, it was really a rough time as, she, as the hair came out. And you know, she went into a deep depression because you know, she was just, she was sick of chemo, she was sick. She was just sick of being sick. And she really had an issue with losing her hair. And, but, you know, she was walking with God the whole time. And, you know, it got to the point, I think this was either the second or third time she lost her, her hair. She looked at me and she said, Mommy, I just want you to know I'm going, I'm going to just go ahead and just pull the rest of my hair out. And, and that's going to be it because I'm okay. Because God loves me just the way I am. And, Mommy, I'm beautiful. <laughs> So God loves your hair. He closes and he says, how fair and how pleasant you are, O oh love, with your delights. So you have to know that God loves the you he created. So it's easy to celebrate the you that God made because you belong to him. So stop making it hard on yourself by comparing yourself to others. It will be easy for you to celebrate the you that God made because God has great things in store for you. 
God has promised to take you to new levels in him and allow you to see things you've never seen before. So when are you going to put value on the word of God that he's spoken over your life? You see, we're living in a time, in a season, that we're going to now have to discern. You just can't look at this as another day of the week or another period in your life. No, this is a peculiar season to celebrate the you that God made because it's going to be a season of new things, new revelations, new impartations, new visions, things we once thought would be impossible. God said now is the time for you to see yourself as an honor vessel, meet for the master's use, someone that he loves and he adores. This is a season to celebrate the you that God made because the Lord has blessed you to see and recognize this season where your purpose is going to be birthed, this season where doors are now going to open and his blessings are going to be on you. This is the season to celebrate the you that God made because you have built up your hope in your most holy faith and you know that God's blessings are coming. His restoration is coming. So this is the season to celebrate the you that God made because God is going to restore everything that you have lost. But you can't risk losing again if you can't believe God and the word that he's given for you. So, stop putting yourself down and stop telling yourself no. And because in this next move of God, he wants you to wake up, snap up, snap out of the depression, and to walk with him because he loves you so much and he wants to bless you. He wants to restore, and he wants to get you to a place where you now have more than enough. So, you look in the mirror, and you say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? And this time... You're not going to think about your girlfriend with the real pretty hair and the light skin who always gets the job and who always seems to be happy. The next time you're going to say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And you're going to say, me. You're going to say, me. So this is a season to celebrate the God, the you that God made. So break down those old patterns of self-hate, self-destruction, and allow God to show you something new about you. Break down those old prejudices of why you don't belong and why you don't allow God to teach you to love yourself. And even when there's no one to love you, break down those judgmental spirits that judge your gifts and talents and allow God's love to permeate your mind, your will, and your emotions. This is the season to celebrate the you that God made. So break down those old patterns that keep you in a rut and push forward and push towards the prize, trusting God to show you a new thing in this new season in your life. You're not going to be able to celebrate the you that God made when you keep telling yourself no. Tell God, yes, I'm ready for whatever you have for me to do because I see that I am beautiful and I am wonderful and Lord, I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made by you, and you've got something in store for me. So I challenge you today to confront every lie the devil has told you. 
I want you to confront every lie even your mother or your father told you that you weren't good enough or you weren't smart enough or you weren't pretty enough or you can't do that or you can't go there. Confront every lie that Satan has told you and see the potential that's within you. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Me. Because God has a plan for my life. God has dreams for me to fulfill. God has plans for me to work out. God has something he wants me to do. Confront your fear. Confront the doubt. Confront the self-hatred. And know that every time you go to the mirror, you see a woman of God who God created, who God loves. I don't know who's in this church today who's been walking around with a negative perception of themselves. See, because before I even open up the doors of the church for those who want to be saved, I want to open up the doors of the church to any woman or every woman who knows that they're dealing with a negative perception of themselves. Now, and see, let me just say this to you. It's going to take courage for you to come. It's going to take courage. Because you want everybody to think that you know it's okay and that you're okay. But you know the reason why you haven't done what you needed to do is because either you don't believe you can or you believe that you won't, you believe nobody will help you, or nobody will believe you, there is somebody in this room who needs to lay it on the altar, who, who, who needs to honestly look within themselves and give that thing over to Jesus. I'm, I'm opening up the doors of the church right now. And I want you to be honest with yourself. Amen, amen, amen. There's more, I know, there's more. There's more, there's more, there's more. I know there's women in this room who's been struggling with dreams. 